Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. In our last video, we took a look at how much stuff you could buy with 80 million credits. We even did a spreadsheet. But while doing research for that video, I began thinking, why are they keeping all of those credits on that tiny little base? I mean, Aldani is literally in the middle of nowhere. And by the way, it's not just 80 million credits. That's just how much Andor's team takes during the heist. If you take a look at this shot taken right before the firefight starts, it's clear that they've only emptied less than one fifth of the vault. I estimate that each one of those racks holds around 50 million credits. There are 10 racks in there, bringing the total credits in that vault to 500 million. So why is there so much money in this very unlikely location? Well, usually if you just follow the money, you'll figure out everything. So that's what we're gonna do. At first glance, Aldani represents the typical kind of backwater planet that the Empire would drop a small outpost on for a variety of different reasons. Maybe they found a important resource extraction opportunity, or they wanna do some secretive R&D away from the Imperial Senate's prying eyes. Senators like Mon Mothra were still holding on to the principles of the Republic, barely, and she was definitely a thorn in Emperor Palpatine's side. The only reason they built that massive base on Scarif was because Scarif is so far away from Coruscant, and it was very likely that Imperial Senators would not have the time to go out there to inspect what they were doing. The outpost on Aldani is a small fortified dam that's been placed directly in the middle of the local tribe's sacred valley, and it's also destroyed the local sacred river. The Imperial presence has also forced thousands of locals to move down to the lowlands. We spent the last decade promoting an Imperial viewing festival down in the Enterprise Zone. The Empire's Enterprise Zone is just the fancy word for a new district of Imperial factories and sweatshops. An Imperial Army garrison holds the dam. These aren't elite stormtroopers, just a motley group of conscripts and volunteers, but they are trained to hold fortified places until reinforcements arrive. And their job is pretty simple. They have anti-air and anti-personnel emplacements stationed all around the valley, and every mountain path is patrolled and guarded. It's a 10-day trek up from the lowlands. That's a really long walk, and you'll be watched the entire way up the valley. It's gonna be really hard to break into this base on foot, unless you have an inside man, of course. And trying to assault this location by air isn't all that easier. The nearest air base, Al Kenzi, is just 52 miles away, and they have a response time of nine minutes. <laughs> We've timed it. And so this base is in a remote location. Um, any villages or people that used to live in this area have all been removed. And so it's kind of the perfect place to stash some treasure. And the imps here definitely have a false sense of security because of all of these factors. Exactly. That's why they only keep a 40-man regiment in the garrison. Because they know no one's stupid enough to try it. In 5 BBY, which is when the raid takes place, the Empire expects no serious threats. I mean, just look at how soft and well-fed the commandant in charge of the garrison looks. The guy freaking dies of a heart attack because he's done a little bit of manual labor. And by the way, those are levitating carts. They don't even have wheels. It shouldn't be that hard to push them around. Clearly, this is a peacetime army full of arrogant Imperials who do not understand that the increasing pressure of their synth leather boots is slowly pissing off the populace they're standing on top of. The Galactic Civil War has not fully begun yet, though. Sure, you have simmering conflicts on isolated planets that occasionally blow up into full-scale wars like on Minbom or Ryloth. But for the most part, this Imperial garrison expects very few threats. They're basically guarding their money from a few sheep herders and the occasional bandit or pirate group that might be in the sector. They definitely don't expect a dedicated Rebel Special Forces unit, which has spent weeks, if not months, scouting and planning a heist. I mean, herein lies the massive problem the Empire always faces. They take way too much territory, and when that new territory does not produce enough taxes to fund the military operations necessary to bring stability and loyalty to that region, the Empire begins to get spread thin. The Aldani outpost isn't just chosen because it's in a good defensible location, though. It's also because of its central distribution point. There might not be much value on this planet itself, but its position in the local sector most likely means that any Imperial convoy from Coruscant or the core regions will have to stop in Aldani first. It's basically a logistical hub world. It's also probably located very centrally in the sector, which is why all of the Imperial credits are placed there. Aldani most likely does not have many gravitational anomalies surrounding it, which means there are a lot of hyperspace lanes going from it to other planets and systems within the sector. Now let's talk about those 500 million credits. It's actually the quarterly pay for the entire sector, which gives us a better hint about what the hell is going on in this region of space. 
we can find out what kind of imperial presence is in this sector by figuring out what the average imperial makes every quarter. We've done a previous conversion of credits to US dollars by using commodity prices and have determined that the credit is close to a one-to-one -one exchange rate with the US dollar. Imperial army conscripts and volunteers probably aren't gonna get paid much. They get benefits and they don't really have to pay for anything while on deployment. The Empire doesn't have a universal draft, but it does seem like a huge percentage of the population are serving, so the pay has to be at least a bit competitive to attract so many people. Although it should be mentioned that people like Andor and Solo, who were formerly criminals and prisoners, were force conscripted into the Imperial Army. This unit is very well known for doing this. Now in the novel Battlefront Twilight Company, we find out that the stormtroopers get paid a little bit better than most of these other units. They also get paid more than what you would normally earn on these backwater planets without much financial opportunity. So I'm going to estimate that the average pay for Imperial military personnel is going to be around a thousand credits for a month or 3000 credits a quarter. This of course fluctuates depending on what rank and position and service branch you're in. This means that the 40-man base on Aldani alone costs 120,000 credits a quarter. And so the 500 million credits can pay for around 160,000 Imperial personnel, more or less. All of a sudden, those 500 million credits don't seem like that much because 160,000 personnel on a galactic scale is in a lot of troops. For instance, an Imperial sector fleet generally comprises of around five to 10 Imperial class Star Destroyers, depending on the size and importance of the sector. Each Imperial class Star Destroyer has around 37,000 crew members and potentially an entire legion or 10,000 stormtroopers. Based on our calculations, 500 million credits will hardly cover the quarterly pay of five crews from an Imperial class Star Destroyer. And these guys probably get paid a lot more than your average Imperial Army grunt. And that's also not counting the Stormtrooper contingent on board, Imperial Army garrisons on the ground, and also ground-based starfighter pilots in the Aldani sector. Maybe our estimate for a thousand credits a month is a bit too high. It might be closer to like 500 credits a month. Or potentially Aldani is just a much smaller sector than we realize. Maybe they only have one or two Imperial class Star Destroyers and a few Arcadian light cruisers and Gazanti class frigates making up their smaller sector fleet. That's not unheard of. It's even possible that the Aldani garrison of only 40 uh, troops is actually a lot larger than any other garrison in this sector. The Imperial Commandant definitely thinks Aldani isn't a place worth staying on. Look, you wanna get out here, do you? Get that transfer, leave this stinking planet, you certainly whine about it enough. If Aldani is considered a crappy place to be, then I wonder what the other planets look like. Or perhaps the Empire simply believes that keeping its credits locked up on a low traffic planet is safer than putting it in the middle of a busy Eusemonopolis. Now, I originally thought that maybe 500 million credits was way too much to keep on a backwater planet like Aldani. And I thought maybe that the Imperial Commandant was over-reporting how many troops were beneath his command so that he could steal a portion of the credits for himself. It's not unheard of for authoritarian regimes to have huge corruption issues amongst its lower ranks, which leads to the creation of phantom armies that exist only on the payrolls. I also thought there was a possibility that all of this excess money was being used to fund some kind of secret mining operation or R&D, or even the construction of the Death Star. After all, we know that a Coruscant engineer is visiting the planet and planning on constructing an airfield in the area to allow for more traffic to pass through the Aldani outpost which seems to indicate that the planet's importance will grow in the future. We aren't told where Aldani is after all, and the Death Star program was moved to several locations during its construction in an attempt to keep it hidden from the rebellion. So I naturally thought that sparsely populated area with a lot of money equals secret Death Star location. That would tie in neatly with the Rogue One story, and it would also mean that stealing this payroll from Aldani greatly delays the Death Star construction. I guess we won't really know the real reason until the upcoming episodes, or maybe they just won't mention it. Maybe this whole entire strike was just designed to really create chaos in one part of the galaxy, and the Aldani garrison was chosen because it's so remote and easy to target if you have the right plan. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic to democracy.